maybe the most uh, prevalent and one we use the most is something called a, a grantor trust, an okay. irrevocable grantor trust. And um, the acronym for that is what an IGIT, right? Yeah, that, sometimes okay. called an IGIT, which okay. stands for intentionally defective yeah. grantor trust. Oh, that's and super. That's super nerdy. That's good nerdy stuff. It right is there. nerdy. Yeah. and you know, I, defective sounds like there's a problem with the trust. In this case. Only um, a lawyer would sell you, be like, hey, I'm selling you something defective that I'm gonna have to fix later. That's that's why lawyers are awesome. And here's I my was, bill. And here's <laughs> my bill. Yeah. yeah the defective grant it says it in the name, right? Yeah. You're trying to take advantage of a difference in the tax code between estate taxes okay. and income taxes. Gotcha. And when is an asset in a trust considered owned by the person for estate taxes and income tax okay. purposes? And um, how it works is there's a way and a mechanism here where a person can transfer an asset to a trust and it once transferred won't be counted against them anymore for estate tax purposes, but for income tax purposes, they still pay income tax the same way right. and they're allowed because of that grantor trust status. A grantor trust is a trust where income tax the grantor, the creator of the trust, is still the taxpayer. Sure, okay. that's what a grantor trust means. Yep. And so, by making this irrevocable trust a grantor trust, instead of just giving assets to the trust, the creator of the trust can also sell assets to the trust. Okay. And in that way, hey, that opens up the playbook now. 